Hey everyone, I figured in today's video I do a bit of a voiceover as I showcase me building my pedal board. I have a simple piece of plywood here that I believe came from a table. I forget the exact dimensions. I believe it's 22 inches across and 12 inches high. I have this fabric carpet that Velcro sticks to. I've had it for a couple of years and I've used it for another pedal board and I figured I'd continue the tradition and use it for this one as well. I cut it to size leaving about half inch to an inch inside from all four sides. I used some Gorilla wood glue and smeared it all across the surface of the board just to make sure the carpet adhered better and evenly all across. And I just let it sit a bit before I got my pedals set up. I have this Donner power supply just to power up all the pedals on the board. And to start off some of the essentials, I would have a Boss Chromatic Tuner just to make sure my instrument is in tune, and an ISP decimator just to help reduce some of the noise that is introduced in some of the circuitry. As for overdrive options, I have a way huge green rhino, which I love a lot, and a electro harmonics crant I got recently. But for the final build, I went with my trusty green rhino. As far as modulation, I have a Electro Harmonics Nano Clone and a Full Tone Coral Flange. I went with the Coral Flange since it allows me to get a broader range of sounds. I also have a Reverb pedal, the Oceans 11 from Electro Harmonics, which is a marvelous pedal. I have a demo of it up on my channel that you can check out. But to get started, I got the tuner set up at the very top of the board out of the way and that will remain permanently on. Now it usually mutes everything after the signal but with the volume pedal that I use from Ernie Ball it has a separate section that connects directly to the tuner so I could t cut the volume off and then I could always make sure my tuner is on whether I have volume full on or off. I have the green rhino followed by the coral flange right next to it then I'm going to start setting up the ISP decimator right off the top of the board as well. As I'm setting it up, this won't be the prettiest board to look at. Just with the cables kind of all over the place. But I'm going to get some zip ties later on just to make sure they're all tied up. I don't have that in the video. But the way that I'll be chaining up this pedal will be my guitar plugged into an Ernie Ball volume pedal. The volume pedal will have a tuner out. Like I mentioned before, that will keep the tuner on at all times. Right out of the volume pedal on the main output, I'm going to go right into the Green Rhino as a lead boost. And after that, I'm going to wire up into the ISP decimator, which will help reduce any excess noise that's going to be coming out of the instrument from interference. And after I get out of the ISP decimator, I'm going to head into my modulation effects, starting off with the full tone coral flange, followed by the Electro Harmonics Oceans 11. I do have an MXR carbon copy delay pedal that I may not have had shown in this video, but I'll be sure to add that into the chain after the chorus and before the reverb. With modulation effects, it all depends on how you want everything set up. Where if you have a delay going into a chorus, you're pretty much having the delay trails have the chorus effect. So you're pretty much adding chorus to your delay. Now if you have chorus followed by delay, you're going to add the chorus signal. And then that's going to be pretty much the blunt of the delayed signal. This little pedal that I have here is a GT2 pedal from Tech 21. They're popular for their Sans amp that is used for bass. But this pedal here is an amp simulator pedal which I will pretty much use primarily when I bring my electric guitars for my acoustic duo. So then that way I could plug my acoustic guitar with a clean amp sound right into the board without having to bring an amplifier with me. As I get the board situated and finish up wiring, I'll make sure everything looks good, make sure everything fits and is comfortable with how it's set up. And this will pretty much serve me whatever needs I ask of my instruments and sound. 
Now my board isn't the most extravagant and I could probably get away with a multi-effects unit, but with a few of these pedals, I've tried them out over the years, listened to a lot of demos, and I really enjoy the individual pedals and I feel like trying to get them out of a multi-effects unit. It would be kind of hard to where I might have to sacrifice some tone and units, but this would be my finished pedal board without my Ernie Ball volume pedal in place just to give you an idea of what it looks like when I'm looking down at the board. And then this would be what my pedal board looks like with the Ernie Ball volume pedal. This will give you an idea on what I'm physically looking at when I'm looking down at my pedal board. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and check my channel for more. Until the next one, I'll see you guys. All right, have a good one. To a broken melody You have one chance, take it from me As the drums play out of time